I'm at Lindholm Lakes near Doncaster and I've been fishing a winter league series here at, at Lindholm. Uh, there's about I think 12 matches in the series and, and I've been doing quite well in these matches but what I've been doing I've been targeting silverfish and also the F1s so I've been targeting skimmers and roach and also F1s using ground bait and loose feeding maggots over the top now this is a method that it's, it's probably not right to win the match. A lot of the matches are won with carp and F1s. But when you're fishing a winter league series and you're fishing for points, then it's possible to get a good point score by fishing for the other fish. And that's what I've been doing on three of the matches. I've actually fished for silverfish early in the match and then just targeted the F1s late on in the day. And had three good results off, off really mediocre pegs. I've had three seconds in the section. Okay, I've not won, but these three results have allowed me to be still doing well in the Winter League series, along with the one win that I've had. Now, the ground bait that I've been using is a, a, a ground bait called Magic. Now, this, this ground bait, it, it was probably one of the first ground baits that I ever used in the census range. Going back years ago when we used to fish for skimmers at Wurzba Reservoir, Magic were a fantastic ground bait for catching skimmers. But of course when you come to commercials you need also some fish meal in the mix as well. And this is what sensors have done, they've produced a, a 3000 Magic fish meal ground bait. Now it's designed to fish on commercials, you've got about 20% fish meal to the magic ground bait that we used to use from years ago. So this is a great mix for fishing for skimmers and also roach. But of course, when you're fishing on a, a place like Lindome, you need to loose feed also over the top. And that's what my plan is to do today, is to fish two lines, one out at about 13 metres and one short where I can loose feed maggots from the hand. The long line I'll pop maggots over the top and feed a few with a catapult to try to draw the fish over the ground bait. But the close line I'll just feed by hand over the top to start with to try and catch the skimmers and roach. The ground bait's important. If you don't feed ground bait, what tends to happen? You don't catch enough bonus or bigger stamp fish. This is what I've found. And by feeding ground bait at the start and making an area, you can actually draw the bigger fish onto that ground bait by loose feeding the maggots and these fish are the most important okay you can keep catching roach on the drop and, and also fishing through the water but you need to also target the skimmers and roach and this is where the ground bait comes into play an holding area underneath where I'm loose feeding the maggots on both lines that I'm going to fish today so we'll just have a look at what I actually mix for this ground bait the census 3000 fish meal magic what I'm going to do I'm going to add this to a bowl and then I'm also going to make a slight twist to this mix what I've been doing I've been adding also to the mix I've been adding some halibut pellets right now when I say halibut pellets these are grind up in a grinder I have a, a just a, a normal blender at home and I get the the four mil halibut pellets and grind them down and once they've been put in the blender, you get a very nice fine ground bait that I also add to the, the fish meal magic. Now the reason for this, I, I want a slightly stronger mix because it's still quite warm, even though we're in winter. And the F1s are still feeding very well. I just wanted to make the ground bait slightly more potent. And by adding, adding some, some halibut pellets ground up this just gives me a slight edge I think as, as to catch again some bigger fish so I've just got a pint of the halibut pellets they're just census match halibut pellets where I've ground down into a fine powder and I'm just going to add that to the ground bait now what this also does the water is still reasonably coloured here at Lindholm you've got a little bit of colour now I could add some dye to the ground bait, just some black dye to, to dye the ground bait down a little bit darker. But with the water still being reasonably coloured, I'd rather have quite a dark brown mix. And the halibut pellets are, are dark in colour and they help to darken the ground bait down. 
so that you're creating a nice a nice area with the fish meal magic but also you've got that little particles of of ground halibut pellets in there just to help draw some bigger f1s in later in the day so all i'm going to do i'm just going to mix them two ingredients together with a whisk now uh, as I always say, when you're mixing ground bait, it's a case of adding the water carefully. I never try to put too much water into the, the ground bait at one go. Another good tip is to mix the ground bait as soon as you get to your peg, or in the morning, often in winter time, you haven't got a lot of time on commercials to rig up so a lot of the time when I get up early morning I mix the ground bait at home and then bring it to the bank of course for filming today I couldn't really do that but once you mix the ground bait at home it's really wets through that ground bait and 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 makes it so it's it's very inert on the bottom so mixing the ground bait at home is what I normally do as I've said also, it, you're always stuck for time on commercials. It, they, they don't seem to give you a lot of time to rig up and, and it's one less thing to do once you're at your peg. Now you can see that that's a very fine mix. The magic's very fine and also the, the ground halibut pellets. Once they're mixed in, it darkens the ground bait down to a real nice colour. So that's a nice ground bait. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave it for about 20, 25 minutes while I'm finishing rigging up and then finish off the ground bait. I want it reasonably wet, not, not real over wet where it's a porridge. I just want it reasonably over wet so that it just lays on the bottom with very, very few particles coming up off it. So that's how I'm going to mix it in about 20 minutes time just to finish off the ground bait. I'm just going to pot in two balls of ground bait. I've made them virtually the pot size, so as they come out of the pot, they'll go straight down to the bottom. They'll not actually roll out of the pot itself. The only thing I've added to the ground bait is just a few dead pinkies, about probably 100 mil of dead pinkies, well, a bit less than that, probably 50 mil of dead pinkies. Just, just, as a, just to, to lay on the bottom where the skimmers will come over the ground bait. I'm loose feeding maggots over the top all the time. What I am going to do, I'm going to cut the ground bait slightly short because I want to fish right on the edge of the ground bait for the bigger fish. And also the maggots that I'm loose feeding, I'll try to feed over the ground bait, allowing me just to fish past. So I'm just fishing five sections of the acolyte pole. And you can see how much pole I've got behind me there. And that's where I'm going to feed the ground bait, just back from where the float will be once I'm fishing. So I've picked a marker on the other bank and just pot in the balls of ground bait. Because I've made them pot size, you can see that they're almost trapping in the pot. But what this does, it stops the ground bait from spinning. So it goes straight down to the bottom, exactly where I want it to be. You'd be amazed how far ground bait, if, if you actually roll it out of a pot, how much it spins and moves from where you actually pot it in. So that's all I'm doing, I'm just putting two balls on the short line and just one on the longer line because this is the line that I'm going to start on out long. So I'm just potting one ball out there, I don't want to put too much bait at the start because I'm hoping to get bites early in the session. And again, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm potting the ground bait just back from where I'll actually be presenting the rig. Again, I picked the marker on the far bank and just potted it straight down. So that's the ground bait fed. Now it's just a case of loose feeding the maggots short by hand. And it's just a, an underarm flick so you can keep the maggots quite tight. Now this is, some people find it quite difficult loose feeding maggots, but if you just pick up a tight pinch in your hand and flick them out under underhand, you can keep the maggots tight together. 
and all the time you're just back from where you'll be presenting the float. Of course on the long line I'll be loose feeding that with a catapult and then potting maggots as well. I've been fishing for a, a couple of hours now and uh, it probably took me an hour to start getting bites and indications but uh, I've started catching quite well. I've had six or seven skimmers and a few, few smaller fish chub and roach. But what's, what's really interesting, even though it's a really, really cold day, I mean we had one degree this morning and it's probably only three or four degrees now nearly every fish is coming on drop which is you know you wouldn't expect skimmers at this time of year to want to to take the bait on the drop but all I'm doing I'm fishing with a, a pot I fed some ground bait on the deck this morning and I'm just potting maggots over the top and loose feeding also I think the loose feeding is quite important because you although I'm potting in a tight area I'm still getting that little bit of a spread of maggots with a catapult as well. And I'm not feeding a, a massive amount of bait, but I'm keeping bait going in all the time. I'm feeding a, a short line with maggots out of my hand where I've also put some ground bait. And then just keeping pinging a few maggots over the top. So I'm creating an area, but then the potted maggots are tightening up around where I'm actually fishing. I just had another indication then. These fish are, they must be off bottom and then just going down with the bait because for every fish to come on drop virtually, you know, tells you that the fish must be off bottom and following it down. But it's great fishing, even though it's, you know, really, really cold, the fishing's nice. Not, not gonna catch a massive weight, but you know, if we were fishing Fishing for points in a winter league, you, you're making your peg tick over and putting fishing net, which is what you want to do. I'm fishing very light, even though it's probably about five foot deep. I'm only fishing a point two rig. And I've just got a, a little block of number 11s and then two droppers below that. An o, o 09 suplex fluorocarbon up length and a, a size 20 Drennan silverfish match hook and just fishing single red maggot on the hook, the live maggot not dead maggots. Ooh that could be foul up that, maybe not, maybe a chub. There is, there is quite a few chub in these lakes and the they're not big fish, but again, they're worth catching in between. In between catching your skimmers, if you can keep coming back with a, a chub or a roach, you, you're building your weight all the time. On these lakes, there's lots and lots of F1s, but they're not in every peg in winter time. And you know, these, these fish that I'm catching now, 
a great white builders, the skimmers and the, the other fish. But of course, I'm always thinking that in the last sort of hour or a couple of hour of the session, I'd hope to catch a few F1s just to bolt my catch out. And that's where you finish up catching a, a little bit bigger weight. Each time I'm just putting an amount of maggots in the pot and potting them in. And then just firing a few over the top with catapult just to just to create that little bit bigger area. I think when you do that as well, if you do make a mistake and bump a fish, the fish have got you know a bigger area to back off onto. You're not just gonna ruin everything if you bump a fish. Because you've got that bit of a spread of maggots. It's dead easy when you sat with the pole in the rest to keep flicking some maggots in short as well for that short line. Again, that had not been in long. That could be a skimmer. This really is nice fishing. These fish are often ignored on these lakes. These skimmers, they don't get fish for a right lot. And there's lot, lots and lots of them. And of course, everybody's targeting carp and F1s and the fishing pellets. And they, I don't know why, they, they don't seem as easy to catch on pellet as what they used to be, whether the, the pellets are not quite the same or I don't know what it is that, that you know, these fish prefer maggots. Another nice skimmer. I've put a few, a few dead pinkies in the ground bait. I've just fed a only one one big pot sized ball out there and if these fish do back off what i'll probably do is feed another ball and come on that short line i've not actually tried short line yet but i'll keep throwing maggots there and and that'll probably be the line where f1s will come later on if they do another little tip to stop you spilling your maggots if you just dip your pot in the water so your pot's wet it stops any maggots bouncing out of your pot, so you're not feeding maggots all over the swim. Only fishing a light elastic, a, a number five, a Preston number five elastic down two sections. And I've got a, a puller kit as well in the pole, so if I do hook a, a bigger fish, an F1 or even a carp, you can still land them even on on very light elastics. It's amazing how big a fish you can land sometimes on just a number five. Oh, that were another indication on drop then. When you get nice conditions like this where you can throw maggots, it's easy to fish that short line at round about sort of five sections or a pole. It's a nice distance out to catch everything. Another indication on drop. These fish are definitely off bottom. <coughs> when you're fishing in winter, you need to dot your floats right down. I'm fishing with a, a Drennan AS1 float, and it's really, really is dotted to a pimple. And some of bites are tiny little dips, and you, you know, often you'd think, oh, I wouldn't strike at that, but if you strike often, the bigger fish. So you've got to lift on virtually everything. Skimmers are notoriously difficult to catch in commercials. I think uh, that they do feed differently to what they do on, on natural waters, where they're probably not, not caught as often, or or they just become more wary in commercials. I don't know really what it is, but they're always tiny little bites. So you need your floats dotted right down.
just picked the short line rig up to just see if there's any fish come over this short line. Feeding it's quite important that you group the maggots and fish throwing the maggots inside the float. When you throw the maggots you need to pick up just a pinch of maggots and then throw them so that the land behind the float inside. I don't want to throw the maggots right on top of the float. This is important when you're catching well on this line because what happens if you throw the maggots right on the top of the float you get lots of indications and bites that's difficult to hook. So I'm trying to feed my maggots back from the float all the time and group them reasonably tight. Last time I actually drew on this lake. I caught very, very well on this short line, catching roach, chub, odd skimmers as well. But today the fishing's been more difficult. That's just a little roach that's just took a single maggot. If this line produces, it's normally the line where you can catch one or two F1s late on as well. And they're the fish that build a bigger weight. Last time I actually drilled this peg I had 33 pound and, and caught several F1s really late in the session. But again I'm fishing a light float just a point two with a strung out shot and a tiny little bolt just to get it down because it's colder today. If it was really a little bit warmer I'd probably just fish a point one and a full strung out rig and catch the fish at all levels but because it's slightly colder I fished a slightly heavier float but you can see the maggots are landing inside the float all the time I'm not trying to feed on top of the float Ooh, it's bumped on there Even though it's, it's cold, on some of the lakes at Lindome you can still catch fish fishing in the margins and fishing short, loose feeding as well. But of course today with the, the temperatures dropping I think that line would be quite difficult to catch on. They're not big fish, but you know you keep catching them, and they're good weight builders. Today it's been a real typical winter's day. It's been one degree when I first started this morning, and warmed up to about three, maybe four degrees. The fishing's been quite difficult, but I've still caught quite a few skimmers, a few roach, and some small chub, and built a, a reasonable weight for a for a cold winter's fishing match really. I've fished it quite simple, I've fished with maggots short over ground bait and also maggots over ground bait long. The short line's been real difficult to catch on today which tells you that the temperatures has probably made that short line not so good today. But on another day when it's warmer that'll be the best line where you can throw maggots out of your hand because you can always gather more fish on an area where you can loose feed more regularly. The long line has been the best line for me today, just potting maggots and just loose feeding carefully over the top, fishing a single maggot on just a 20 up or 9 up length in case you hook a bigger fish like an F1 or a big perch or whatever. But I've caught steadily for probably an hour, an hour and a half where the fishing's been quite good. So we'll just have a look at what the end result of today's fishing is. <laughs>